The army has taken over power in Zimbabwe and brought uh, Robert Mugabe and his wife Grace into protective custody. Joining me to discuss the fast-moving events in Harare is Alec Russell, our former Southern Africa correspondent. Uh, Alec, is this the end of Robert Mugabe? Well, people have been asking that question for a long time. So I've covered Zimbabwe off and on for nearly 25 years. And I remember on my very first trip in 1994 to cover an election, people were, were saying, well, he's been, the old man has been in power for 14 years. It can't go on much longer. It's gone on a lot longer. The reason I say, I, I cite the past here is that uh, people have got this wrong many times before and have said, this is it, it's finally over for him, and it hasn't been. This time, however, I really do think this is it for him. It's been a remarkable 37-year uh, rule, if you like, for Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe and a period of great sort of hope turning to disappointment and, and uh, uh, desperation for many Zimbabweans. But he still remains quite popular. So is this actually a move against him or against, or is this a sort of factional fight within the ruling ZANU-PF, perhaps aimed at his wife, Grace, and the younger sort of cohort of uh, ZANU-PF uh, activists? Number one, he still has the luster of liberation. This was the man who presided over the formation of the new country, Zimbabwe, in 1990, 1980, rather, and gave an astonishingly reconciliatory speech. And so he's the father of the nation, and, and many Zimbabweans have only known Robert Mugabe. They, they still do look up to him, in particular in the rural areas, not in, not in the towns. But he's increasingly alienated people even around him in, in recent months, and the army just seems to have decided to, uh, to bring this political turmoil to an end. The one, the one thing I would add, though, is that... Uh, it may be the end of Robert Mugabe in all but name, but whether it's the end of Mugabeism is another question altogether, because it's quite possible that, that the army and people, civilian politicians working with them, will continue in the same predatory way uh, that Mugabe has in recent years. The events of the last few days were triggered by Mugabe sacking his vice president, Emerson Mnangagwa, uh, who we believe is now on his way back to Harare, perhaps to take over power. Um, what do we know about him and would he bring in new change? Would he actually bring, bring in or trigger a sort of transition to a more democratic and well-governed well country? What do we know about him? He's uh, an extraordinary survivor. It's been very hard to survive in Zimbabwean politics uh, in, in, the re in the last 30 years because Mugabe's been brilliant at sidelining anyone who's threatened his, uh, his, his position. So the vice president, nicknamed uh, reassuringly the crocodile, uh, has been his right-hand man for many of the last 10 plus years. Uh, he was, to be clear, this, this guy is no sort of great uh, symbol of hope and peace and democracy. This man was behind some of the worst abuses of Mugabe's long period in power. That said, it is just possible, if you take an optimistic view, that he will come in, if this is what happens, will have new overtures to the outside world and say, we have to move Zimbabwe into a new era. I say just possible. And if we were to be optimistic and see this kind of transition to a more democratic regime and a more prosperous country, what would that mean for the region? Very important for the region, this. Uh, so it's almost 20 years to the day since the Zimbabwe economy just started plunging off the top of a precipice. And this was all provoked by uh, Mugabe having to pay war veterans and the army money that the country couldn't afford because they were getting restive. Uh, the last 20 years have been a disaster for the Zimbabwean economy, uh, and that's had a huge knock-on effect for the region. It sent hundreds of thousands of people into South Africa and other neighboring countries. And also, this has happened at a time when the rest of the region has been becoming more just more successful, more business friendly. So if Zimbabwe can get its act together, which is possible, uh, then that's very good news for the region. Business will be looking on, all sorts of businesses will be looking, looking on at Zimbabwe now with, with, with hope.